Uh, who here has heard of Spill Games? Yeah. Um, well, I hadn't heard of it. Holy crap, it's so big. It's like a company that is so big that, uh, and, and, and has so many, 130 million uniques um, daily. Uh, so, uh, so they've got a, they've got a um, uh, pretty good story to tell on performance. Um, it's like the largest company that, I've, that I had never heard of um, before, uh, which is probably a good thing. So, um, so uh, please, round of applause uh, for Ivo. Thank you. Okay, is it working? Thanks for that, John. Um, yeah, I'm Ivo Till. I work for Spill Games. I've been working for Spill Games for about 10 years now. I uh, started off as a system engineer developer, and as of I moved into the role of CTO. Um, but as, join, uh, as John correctly pointed out, who are we? Well, I think we've been uh, flying under the radar for, for quite a while. And our marketing department wants me to sell that we are the global leader in online gaming. And this is a nice tagline, but, but what does that really mean? Why are we a global leader? We have a large reach, 130 million unique users every month. And these people go to all our different social gaming portals. We have our own portals. We are independent. We do not rely on Facebook, for instance. And as you can see, it's really scattered all around the world. So to me, it's very obvious why performance to us is an important thing. So what is our key offering, really? It's three targeted channels, gaming portals aimed at girls, ages 8 to 12, aimed at boys and girls, 10 to 15, and families, basically mothers playing with their children. And these are localized in over 19 different languages, and we have some local strong domains like spielen.com, jetspiele, uh, juegos.com, gamesgames.com, uh, gamesco UK, those types of domain names, very easy to understand, and obviously all content on these portals is localized. And if you look at the technology behind this, uh, we basically use the LAMP stack, and that's LAMP with an E. So we use Linux, Nginx, MySQL, PHP, but also some Python. Uh, we're now playing around with, uh, with Erlang as well for our multiplayer offering. Um, and we really, really love technology. And if you go to our portals with your mobile device, so for instance, you type in Gamesco UK on your Android or your iPhone, you will end up at an HTML5 optimized website with true HTML5 gaming. So no installing of apps or anything like that. You go to our portals, you get the same look and feel, the same social feature set, and you're able to play our games. So what are our goals? Well, we really want to deliver a cross, a cross platform social gaming experience. If you, for instance, are playing a game on your desktop, and at one point you think, oh, I have to go to work. But in the bus, you're sitting with your iPhone, you would really like to continue playing those games that you were playing. And this is what we want to strive towards. So if you have your iPhone in the bus, you should be able to pick up where you left off and really just continue your gaming experience. And this should obviously be quick around the world, especially for mobile gaming. So what is the performance challenge? Taking it a few steps back. Um, for us, taking on performance was more about getting the organization to take performance seriously. Although it might be something that sounds very logic, at least to me it does, um, not everyone in the business will agree. We live in high broadband countries, uh, especially the Netherlands, the fastest uh, broadband, or the most broadband penetration uh, of Europe. And people in the office will really say, yeah, site is working just excellent for me, really quickly, very fast, responsive, but okay. That might be true, but what about your end users? What about other countries? We have a lot of traffic from Brazil. What's the experience there? It probably will be quite, quite different. What about other browsers? What about mobile devices? And they will say, yeah, but the functionality is working fine. It's, I click, something happens, it's all good. But what about other people? Is it really fast? Is it responsive? There's a lot more than just saying, it works. Huh? Everyone knows the ancient problem. Something is broken, someone looks at the computer and says, yeah, it works for me. That's not how you should, uh, you should view this. They might even say, yeah, so people have to wait. But 
We all know that on average, people will only wait four seconds, especially for a first impression. And you can only make that first impression once, so you really want to make it a good impression. And what everyone knows is people, especially from the business, will really push on, we want to develop features, we want to develop new functionality. And this is true, and, and this is definitely something we as technology support, but you should ask them, what about performance improvements? What will that bring? Won't that even lead to more page views or leads to more time on site? Those types of things. And although we, have, we definitely have to implement features, we also need to really focus on performance. So, all in all, I think we all agree. End users are key, so their experience is key. And performance is really a huge part of this experience. And we at Spillgame say, performance is not a project, it's a mission. And this is also why, why huh, I'm dressed up with the snail. We really want to stop sites from being slow. And although we have gone off to a great start, and Lawrence will show a few of those things later on, um, I think we still have a long way to go. But we really, really, really take it seriously. And we know that it's not a project, there's no end. You need to constantly be doing this. So, how did we do it? How did we get the organization to take performance seriously? We did it with focus, uh, very similar to uh, Jeff's uh, yellow code uh, meetings. We really focused on isolating a group of developers, engineers, for a kickoff meeting, on a remote location even, to really ensure that they could be full force on looking at, okay, what are our products? How quickly do they load? Can we, can we test it in different countries? Can we talk to other people to test it for us? Can we look at some of the low-hanging fruits? What can we optimize? Uh, and these types of things will lead to some proofs of concept, some things that you can very easily do, but could have a big, big gain for some of your, your users. And then we created awareness. We focused on, okay, look at these numbers with one day of work, we could optimize this, and this piece will be four seconds quicker. These types of numbers are really something you need to present to the business. It's like, hey, if we do this, then this is what you get out of it. This is what they understand. Um, but also, you need to look at the numbers that matter to you. For us, it's page views, but also time on site. And the longer people are on our sites, the better the games. Um, but also, the number of page views, number of gameplays. Persistency is very important, so don't give up. Also, always ensure that you look at functionalities that are being developed. Could they be faster? Challenge people on their implementations, but also support them, help them, and explain to them, well, you've created this in this way, but we think that if you create it in, in that way, it might be a small change, it will actually perform quite a lot better. And it's really about creating this understanding. And obviously, if at first you don't succeed, keep on trying again. And if you do succeed, you need to keep grip, establish baselines on your performance numbers, uh, and really, really guard these baselines, and make it clear to everyone, this is the site load times now. Set up systems so that you can constantly see if there's certain changes that have an impact. Because obviously, if you have put a lot of time and effort into optimizing something, you don't want to lose this afterwards. So no more excuses. With the right focus and the right attitude, you can definitely ensure that also the organization is fully backing up performance. So some of the challenges ahead for us. Obviously, gaining insights. It's difficult, it's hard. There's so many factors, especially to do an individual change. Uh, you might do a change that has a performance improvement, but the business also wants to, at the same time, release a feature, and marketing might be driving some extra traffic, or might actually be stopping some campaigns. And there's so many things yeah, basically influencing your numbers that it's hard to measure. Also, we don't have a single product. Huh? We have teens, family, girls' channels, built in different ways, different code bases, different geographical areas. Um, Brazil, again, an important country for us. Over 10% of our traffic comes from there. But I'm not in Brazil, I'm in the Netherlands. So how do I have a good experience for those type of people? And also, I strongly believe that the amount of time people will wait for something differs per culture, per age, per region. And these are the types of insights that I would really like to get. So, what's the return of investment for a gaming company? 
it's, it's very difficult to measure because we are not an e-commerce site. People come to our sites to play games, casual games, social games, multiplayer games, but it's different from selling a product. If you make a change, you can directly see how much more products you sell. So we have to look at other numbers, like, for instance, gameplays. So the traditional metrics for us are not always applicable. What we saw is we have a preloader before our games, and this preloader shows some advertising. And after seven seconds, you, you get to see a skip link so that you can skip the advertising and directly play the game because that was loaded in the background. If we increase the time it took for the skip link to appear from seven to 15 seconds, there were 10% less gameplays being done. So 10% less people that would want to wait for that game to appear. And on our numbers, that's, that's really a lot, a lot of gameplays. So different types of content, casual, social, and obviously different types of users. I think that, for instance, girls behave differently than, than boys, also different age groups. So what are our goals? We want to gain more insights, as I already pointed out. And this is really something I wanted to do more on an individual level, multivariance testing, making small changes, presenting this to a certain amount of users, and seeing if the, the performance for those users improves, so that we don't have the external impact from, for instance, marketing. I also want to gain insights per country and per game type, casual games, social games, multiplayer games, different types of games, different types of uh, yeah, expectations and the per age group and gender. I really want to, for instance, in a year, say, okay, the global average might be four and a half seconds that people want to wait, but actually we know that in Brazil, people, because the connection speeds are slower, are waiting seven seconds or are actually expecting even better performance. I think that it's too easy to just say four and a half seconds, that's the global average, because there's so many factors that come into play. And obviously we want to share our knowledge, we want to change mindsets. Yeah? The whole performance movement, I, th I, I strongly believe in that, and we have definitely been, uh, been inspired by, uh, by Steve in this as well. Um, we want to aim for having a full page load time under three seconds globally. For Europe, that's not going to be th that hard. For the US, I don't think so either. But really, the emerging markets, this is a challenge, and we would gladly take this one on. And we need to move towards performance-based content. What is performance-based content? If a user has a low bandwidth connection, there's no point in feeding them a very large game or really a very big video advertisement because the chances are that they will not stick around to wait for that. But if you offer them the right content, they will stick around and they will become very loyal users. So without further ado, I would want to uh, introduce my colleague Lawrence, who will dive a bit deeper into the technical aspects of the things we've done, uh, which I'm quite sure you guys will, uh, will really like. Good morning, uh, everyone. Is the mic working? Or? Yeah. Okay, I don't hear it. <laughs> um, let me quickly introduce myself. I'm uh, Laurens van Ees. Um, a few months ago, I uh, received a unique opportunity to uh, optimize around 50 uh, of Spill Games' websites. Uh, I didn't receive this as a project, but I'm uh, doing this as a dedicated performance engineer. Um, we were already... Um, uh, we already had some things which were uh, um, helping the, uh, the performance to be fast. Uh, we were um, sending out gzip headers, caching headers. We were uh, already combining resources, uh, but it wasn't enough. Uh, so we, um, we started uh, to extend our knowledge. We visited, for example, uh, uh, Velocity in the US uh, this year. Uh, we've been reading uh, our books and really a lot of uh, articles. Uh, but you need to begin uh, somewhere. So what we took on was uh, our home page. We found out that 61% uh, uh, of our unique visitors were actually entering the home page first. Um, to do this, we've been gathering a lot of data. We've been using uh, webpagetest.org, uh, Catchpoint, and Google Analytics site speed. Uh, we've been analyzing a lot of uh, the waterfalls uh, and the data itself to find uh, the low-hanging fruits. Um, it's good to know that uh, what's mentioned a couple of times in other talks before is the difference between synthetic monitoring and real user monitoring. Uh, you really need to, to know that uh, the 
uh, what you're seeing in the waterfall, for example, a web page tester dog, or on a catch point, is not really uh, the performance uh, what your users are actually experiencing. Um, I want to share you a few of the numbers, uh, uh, of at least from where we started on a particular site, agam.com. Uh, as you can see, uh, we had an average response time of 992 uh, milliseconds. Uh, this was measured from uh, uh, well, uh, around 35 locations uh, within IE8 on the home page. Um, the render start was even 4.5 seconds, so uh, for most of the users uh, it would take uh, 4.5 seconds before they actually would see something within the screen. Uh, on the other numbers, the DOM load was 5.4 seconds. Uh, document complete was 7.8 seconds, and the full page load uh, was even 11.5 seconds. Um, on a regular, oh, sorry, too fast. I <laughs> uh, want to, to share you a bit of the numbers uh, where we are right now. Um, we know we can get uh, much more out of it, but with some, uh, let's say, quick optimizations, we already uh, cut off a lot of loading times. Uh, currently, the average response time is 11.8 uh, times faster. Uh, it's actually 84 milliseconds, a big difference compared to 992 uh, milliseconds. Uh, the rendering start uh, from 4.5 yeah, uh, seconds to 205 milliseconds. Um, so we're now actually basically we're uh, progressively uh, building up the web page instead of uh, fetching all the JavaScript directly executing it and then sh displaying it. Uh, that's a speed up of 21.9 uh, 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 times as fast. Um, DOM load is 14.6 uh, times faster. The document complete is 4.1 times faster. And the full page load is even uh, of RC is uh, 2.7 times faster. Did a quick calculation with our uh, current uh, you, uh, the, the amount of users we have on a regular Saturday uh, for users, it will save them uh, on one day only around four years of waiting time. <coughs> um, oh, sorry. Uh, so how we did this, uh, the, the simplest thing was actually we introduced a CDN, uh, but we didn't just went with the default setup. You really need to know um, how the CDN works, the configuration options you have, and uh, you need to, to fine-tune it to get the maximum out of it. <coughs> um, we also... Oh, sorry, my notes. <laughs> ah, we um, had a few uh, tests as well. For example, there was uh, for user in India. Uh, we have an, uh, a website running there as well. It uh, took around tw uh, 12 seconds on the 1.5 uh, Mbit connection uh, before the rendering started. So imagine that you have to wait 12 seconds before you actually see something appearing in the screen. Uh, our global average for that was uh, 4.5 seconds, and as you can see now, it's only 205 uh, milliseconds. Uh, so how we did that is, well, we introduced CDM, but we also um, we're qu our pages are quite heavy on JavaScript. Uh, we were including a lot of external uh, resources within the, uh, the head section uh, of the HTML pages. Uh, we moved them out of there and we made them uh, non-blocking. Uh, I've been using uh, this li uh, JavaScript library for that. Uh, it's called HeadJS. It's, uh, we use it because it's really flexible, it's easy to use, and it has an ab ability to uh, download all the files, files in parallel, even if the browser doesn't support it uh, by default. Uh, what it brought to us, as you can see here, this is a graph. Uh, it's um, uh, from Catchpoint. Uh, you can see that uh, this is ex exactly uh, at the moment we released. Um, uh, the non-blocking Jav uh, JavaScript, say, uh, you can see there's already a huge drop in the loading times. Uh, we did uh, some other things as well. Uh, we've been reducing some HTTP requests, uh, combining JavaScript, CSS files, uh, the best practices, actually. Uh, we've, been uh, we've been making some sprites, although we know we can uh, win a lot more there. Um, 
have we have been able to reduce uh, a lot of the layout image, the, the file size of the layout images, uh, by applying uh, lossy and lossless compression to them. Um, some some images we even gained uh, or even won 80% of the file size. Um, I think this mentioned yesterday as well in um, Internet Explorer. Uh, there's um, if you don't send the character set header within your HTTP response. Uh, IE needs to scan the document and find out what the um, uh, the character set of the document is. And once it has found, uh, but it already um, started up connections to, for example, to fetch your uh, CSS files, it, it will break them off, uh, restarts the engine, and does it all over again. Uh, it's simply uh, fixed by sending the character set header as uh, an HTTP uh, in the HTTP response. I've uh, been reordering the add section, uh, moved uh, away all the JavaScript, um, made sure the CSS was positioned at the correct place. Um, we were still using the, uh, the let's say, the blocking version of Google Analytics. Uh, now we're using the asynchronous version of that. Uh, we also, because it is asynchronous, we were able to to place it higher in the document, which is which also allows us to. Um, to, to gather more data from users uh, who are actually clicking away from your page because now uh, this code is executed quite fast and it's uh, before our code was blocking this so uh, we were not really measuring those users. Um, we've been, uh, yeah, applied, uh, applied domain sharding uh, on static resources. Uh, recently did um, a quick uh, trial with uh, a quite new website of us, a10.com. Um, first, I thought that uh, if you just uh, uh, if you shard all the resources uh, on four to five domains, uh, that would be better for performance. But actually, we found that uh, for the slower connections, um, it was taking up all the bandwidth, uh, which uh, by which all the resources uh, took longer uh, to, to download. And now we uh, brought it back to two, and it's actually uh, uh, faster than using more. Uh, Domains, host names, and of course, uh, way more improvements. Um, the results we have uh, so far, uh, again on agame.com. As you can see, there's still uh, we can still uh, optimize a lot here. Um, but uh, uh, yeah, we need, it's not only um, what we've learned is that you should not only uh, focus on optimizing, uh, but you should also focus on um, making sure that bad performing uh, applications, features, uh, won't go live again. You need to, uh, to set up some, some uh, requirements for the developers uh, to make sure uh, that, it, uh, that you're not, it's uh, English saying, carrying call to uh, Newcastle. Does anyone know that uh, saying? Oh, a few. <laughs> it's more or less like, um, in Dutch, then <laughs> it's uh, carrying uh, water to the ocean. Maybe that's how something. It's um, uh, also we want to. Uh, uh, currently, we have synthetic monitoring. Of yeah, synthetic monitoring, and we're using uh, the side, side speed from Google Analytics. Uh, we have some data there, but we uh, want to get. Uh, uh, we're measuring some of the pages, but not all the pages. Uh, one of uh, the sites can exist out of thousands of different pages. Uh, for example, we uh, we have a lot of games, uh, which also differ in the file size of the flash object itself, which also can impact the performance. Uh, so we want to um, start using a real user monitoring uh, to get more insights into it and to, to optimize more into detail. Uh, we also would like to, to monitor our staging environment uh, with uh, tools like Catchpoint, for example. Uh, so that we can, uh, before uh, something goes live, we can see the impact on the performance. Was it still there? Oh. Um, I, was, I was talking about this slide, actually. <laughs> um, sorry. <coughs> Yeah. It's also what you, uh, recently I saw uh, an article um, 
from uh, that uh, from the Google advertisements. Uh, they are actually taking uh, performance now into account as well. Uh, so if your site is uh, uh, more performant, uh, the um, uh, I said it, the the, ad the advertisements on your, uh, displayed on your website will become uh, more relevant. Uh, as you can see, it's uh, it's really it's getting more and more important to to improve the performance of your web pages. And uh, that's it. If you have uh, any questions, uh, we'd love to uh, talk, uh, continue talking afterwards. And as you might have noticed, uh, we're hiring. <coughs>